Here on this Debaco University video, we're going to go over hemp russet mites, identifying them, and how you go about controlling them if you do identify them on your cannabis plants. All right, how, let's go over how to identify and control hemp russet mites on cannabis plants. So first off, that general description, and they are small, just to give you an idea. I guess we'll go back here to the actual measurements. They are very, very small. This is evidence of one right here. We can, can see them right here um, on the leaf itself. Cannabis is the only reported host for hemp russet mites and attempts to establish it on related plants in the cannabis basically general family, Cannabisiae, uh, such as hops and uh, hackberry, have so far been unsuccessful. So it's kind of very specific to um, hemp cannabis. While this may not uh, be studied very well, there are indications that it is related to the tomato russet mite. So if you're looking for something to compare to, that might be a source of at least initial ideas uh, for methods of control. Hemp russet mites can likely survive year-round in indoor production environments and possible on outdoor plants as well as those indoor plants. Hemp russet mites can crawl only very short distances and uh, immature stages are particularly immobile. So keep that in mind. They're going to be a little more localized in, at those stages. However, adults are capable of crawling and may move to the edge of leaves where they can then be picked up or carried by air currents in enclosed areas. Fans can quickly spread mites as well. So just because they themselves cannot fly, uh, because they're so small, it's very easy for them to get picked up uh, in wind or fans and be dispersed that way. Indoor small breezes can distribute the mites uh, through a field. Uh, so indoor we have those fans, outdoor small breezes, easily to spread them even though they themselves may not be able to fly. So how do we go about identifying hemp russet mites um, on, on the actual plant? Well, they can develop on the upper leaf surface as shown in the image, uh, as you can see here, but the highest numbers are found typically on the underside of the leaf. Infestations can result in a dull leaf coloration, reduced leaf size, and also a reduction in plant growth. We kind of see that stunting going on right here. Leaf edge curl can be an indication, but this same visual cue can also be a result of many other situations. So just because you have leaf curl doesn't mean you have russet mites, but it is something you should be considering and at least scouting for. When you go about managing those uh, russet mites, what should you go about to do to manage them? As industrial hemp is a relatively new legalized crop, many miticides utilized for specialty crops or field crops have not yet been registered, so be sure to check your local and current regulations. Studies on citrus rust mites in Florida and Israel show that the interruption of broad-spectrum pesticide applications for more than three years may increase populations of pernicious mites. In industrial hemp, making judicious use of pesticides may be an effective tool to reduce hemp russet mites. Oil-based miticides may have some effectiveness since there have been shown to be effective against spider mites. And we talk about that leaf curl. Leafs may curl upward near the petiole. So down here we're seeing relatively normal flat appearance to the leaves, but we are seeing near that petiole, near that kind of central portion, uh, we are seeing that tendency for them to kind of curl upwards. You can also see the yellow, yellowation kind of variegation here on the edge, yellows to the margins. Um, this can also be an indication of potential nutrient deficiency, but also worthwhile to check with that kind of high-end uh, loop to be able to go through a magnifying glass to check these also for russet mites. Even though they don't have the traditional kind of little leaf curl at the petiole, still we're checking that underside for those very small mites because if you're dealing with an insect versus a nutrient deficiency, that's going to change how you go about managing your potential issue in your cannabis plant uh, in a much different direction. And you want to make sure you're putting time and effort into the most effective method of correcting whatever problem you have, but it starts with an accurate diagnosis.